Welcome back to episode 17, where we're going to be working on exporting our language to an EX, a standalone EXE file that you can give to your friends or release and put it on GitHub so that other people can download and add your language's EXE to their path and use it as if um, you had any other language, pretty much. So for right now, the first thing we're going to do is in our terminal. So in our terminal, we need to install another package. So pip install py installer. This is the one of the easiest libraries to compile up your Python code into a standalone executable. So I'll press enter and make sure that's all installed. Once that's installed, we can make this terminal a little smaller. We can move into our main.py file for the first time in a little bit. Up here, we can add another import from argparse, import argument parser, namespace. In our debug flags, make sure everything is set to false. All of our debug, you can keep run code, we can keep that one true. Then we're going to go back up to our new function named parse arguments. So this is going to allow us to pass in arguments into our exe and it's just going to help us kind of structure it to be an easier time. And this is going to return our namespace that we imported. So arg parser variable is going to be an argument parser. Make an instance of that argument parser. We'll enter down and we'll set a description here. So I, you can put your whatever you want here. I'm just putting mine name of this language and whatever version it's going to be so we'll make that one it's a very much alpha versioned language we're going to add some required arguments to this so our arg parser class dot add argument first one's going to be file path it's going to be the type of a string and our help text for this argument is going to be path to your entry point lime file let example main.lime we're going to add one more argument underneath under this so arg parser add argument this will be a debug flag dash dash debug action it's going to be store true so if the user adds this flag it's just going to resolve to a boolean true. And the help text is going to be prints internal debug information. So the debug stuff that we've been using. Last thing is we're going to return the arg parser dot parse args function. Next thing we're going to add another one here underneath run code. We're going to call it prod debug a boolean and we'll set that to false by default. Go ahead and get rid of this code thing here to clean up. We're going to do a little bit of housekeeping here. So above our reading from the input file, we want a new variable args equal parse arguments. That's the first thing we do. If args.debug we want to set that prod debug flag to true. So this debug here is this. Our file, we're going to make a file path variable equal to tests dot test or test slash test dot line. If args dot file path. So if we did pass in a fire or a file path into our exe, we're going to set file path equal to args.filePath. So this one's just going to be our default, the one we've been using down here. And if we added an argument with one, we want to set that variable with it. And we'll use in our open function, we'll use that, whatever that resolve file path is from here. And we'll scroll down. We're going to add a couple of things here. So in between or we'll have our program in between this. 
first thing is going to be our parse start time. So float equal to time dot time. And then we'll copy that, paste it below. This will be et for end time, time dot time. We'll check the errors. If parser debug, we'll write that AST as well. Keep the compiler here. For the compile step, the actual functional call, we'll make two more time tracking variables. Compiler start time, time dot time. Compiler end time, so float, time dot time. So we're just taking when it starts, when it ends, we can calculate how long it took. So down here in the output steps, we have our module, everything's good here. Compiler debug, great. Compiler errors, great. Our run code function, we'll scroll down a little bit. Everything's looking good here. At the very end of this ET, we're going to set up our prod debug flag. So if that's running, if that's set to true, I'll paste these in. We're going to add two more print statements. One's going to tell us how long it took to parse in milliseconds and how long it took to compile in uh, milliseconds. Should be it for everything for the main.py file. So we'll scroll this thing up a little bit, make it bigger, the terminal. We're going to run a command for pyinstaller to compile our Python code into an exe. So we'll call pyinstaller dash dash one file. So that's what's going to make it standalone. We're going to make the name of that file dash dash name. The name will be lime. Now, if you wanted wanted to add an icon, you can. I'm not going to do it right now, but you could add in this. So dash dash icon and then a file path to get to that icon from this um, folder here. So you can add an assets and then add your ICO file and that will give your exe this icon. I'm not going to use this for right now. So feel free to do that. And then finally the entry point file I want to compile, so main.py. We're going to enter that in and let it compile. It might take a minute or two. All right, now that that's compiled, we can make this terminal a little bit. You'll see that a couple folders have been made. Also a little file lime.spec. It's just something for the um, Pi installer module. But we have dist and build. What we're pretty worried about is the dist folder, which is where our lime.exe is. So I'm going to create a new file in this dist. Call it main.lime. We'll take this test right here. Yeah, we'll take this test right here. And we will put it in our main.lime file. I'll go ahead and get rid of the import for now. I don't feel like copying that over. And we'll just do i plus 8 here. So that'll be a good main file for us to watch. Now that we have this main file figured out, all we have to do is just go back to our terminal and make it a little bigger. We'll run cd dist to get in that dist folder. We'll do dot slash lime dot exe and pass in main dot lime as our file path. And then run it. And here we go. In under a millisecond, we've done this. i plus 8 is 9. And now you have an exe that you can use. You can add this file path to your environment variables on Windows so that you can use the lime command anywhere in your computer. But I won't go over that quick. That's a quick Google search. Just look up how to add an exe to your path variables or your environment variables for whatever operating system you're using. Probably going to be the first link, so I'll let you guys handle that. But one last thing, if you do have this in a GitHub, which you probably should, Create a new file if you don't have already. Add a git ignore. And you'll want to add your build directory to this ignore. So build slash star. So everything in that build folder. And then dist slash star. So everything in the dist. Because you don't want to 
upload these exes or all these build things that don't matter to github so make sure you guys do that if you desire <laughs> but thank you guys for watching our next episode um i still have to try and implement but a, a helpful viewer has made me aware of a way we can create a static make this statically compiled rather than jet compiled so i'm gonna add that as our next episode as a little bonus episode onto this so if you wanted to statically compile your language to its own exe your own programs exe uh, that'll be coming in the next one so thank you guys for watching and i will see you in the next episode and series